size of a backpack has been illuminated. We're seeing bright flashes going on all over the sky. And it is the Commandante of the Mossy Oak Militia taking to the airwaves once more to come to all of you out there. It is Radio Contra. And after spending a weekend with some incredible people, had a uh, overfilled class, a larger class than I normally like to teach for the first line course out in the wild and uh, really just had an incredible time. Uh, any class that you have, any course that you run, that at the end of uh, the two days you look at your watch and you just can't believe what time it is. And, uh, you know, people got to go their separate ways and they got families and jobs and everything else to head home to. And, you know, the, the time just flies by. You know, the time just flies by. And whenever you have that going on in the community that we had over the weekend, it is really something special uh, to behold and to be a part of and to facilitate and foster and nurture and watch. And people from some incredibly diverse backgrounds, uh, people who come from quite literally all walks of life, and I'm continuously blown away by that. Uh, I really, really am. And, you know, when I open this show, when I open this podcast and I talk about how uh, this, you know, this, this is a podcast for the common man out there. This is a podcast for, uh, I very jokingly say, the Mossy Oak Militia, you know, as, as kind of a, a play on words. And, uh you know, it, but it really is, uh, you know, I, I say a lot of things kind of tongue in cheek, a lot of stuff in jest, but it's also a reflection of the reality. And that is a reality that we are beginning to see It is a reality that we see uh, unfolding before our very eyes. The fact that we are waking up to a reality of a world where the great awakening, uh, the, the great unwashed masses and in many cases uh many people of you know the the higher end of the spectrum the upper crust they're starting to see that there's a much larger pattern of things at work here that there is something dreadfully not right with the world you know and all you have to do is look over many of the headlines of today and you will see this uh, you will see these things. You know, we've got the the Southwestern Rebellion that is continuing. The pilots, uh, which are refusing to fly. And, of course, this is just the, the tip of the iceberg with this. This is the tip of the iceberg. They, You know, the, the pilots are refusing to fly. And there's uh, anybody that works in, in civil aviation can tell you. Uh, I happen to have a lot of pilots in civil aviation that come through class and you know they've been telling me a lot of different things over the years that um you know how unbearable the situation is getting with all this wokeness and uh this liberal propensity for linear forms of authority which uh you know they don't believe in a chain of command or whatever we're all kind of on this equal uh, playing field and, and, you know, a lot of these old hands, the, the pilots that came up in the air force came up in the Navy, um, you know, and, and flying commercial or flying civil aviation, they're just not putting up with it. Uh, they're not going to put up with this crap and they've been walking off the job. And of course, you know, now we have this, the vaccine mandates, they're not putting up with this stuff. They are refusing to do it. And so they're grinding it all to a halt. And of course, Southwestern, airlines they don't want to admit to this 
Uh, they don't want to admit to the fact that uh, very much like the old the old labor union uh, wobbly tropes out there for anybody that knows us of the kind of Woody Guthrie folk song kind of deal, you know, like like they they have the planes, but we have the power. And, and that is very true. <clears throat> that is absolutely true. And we're finding that uh, we're getting close to the end of this week when the vaccine mandates are scheduled to begin to be enforced for employers. You're going to see a lot of law enforcement that are going to be walking off the job. You're going to see a lot of pilots, uh, a lot more of this stuff. So the rebellion is beginning. The rebellion is beginning. And it's in common knowledge now. Uh, what these mRNA gene therapy injections do, I mean, it, it's, it is in common parlance that the clot shot is dangerous, it is unproven, untested, uh, except that you're being the one who is subject to the test, like a little lab rat running around out there, because that is exactly how the elites see all of us. That is exactly how they see all of us. And of course, you know, it, it's, it is a manufactured crisis for sure. I think that uh, personally looking at things, this might be part of a larger scheme of maneuver that is going on. Uh, you know, we're experiencing mass energy shortages uh, here in the United States. We'll be, we will be, mark my words, we will be experiencing energy shortages this winter it is coming. India is experiencing a coal shortage. Uh, the headline here: India is experiencing coal shortage. Less than eight days of supplies left. So the world's second largest uh, in population, second largest nation, is going to be uh, out of energy soon. Less than eight days of supplies left. You've got Australia that's on full lockdown, which is the coal exporter to much of that part of the world. You have China, which is chronically short. They're having to already ration their energy supplies out. You know, it's not going to be long like this, folks. It's not going to be long like this. You have to take your preparedness seriously right now. Whatever it is that you have, whatever it is that you have been doing, whatever it is uh, that is your conception of how you think the world is going to be, take a look in your pantry, take a look in your prepper room, your armory, your storage facility, whatever it is that you have, and make a very sober assessment right now of what you have and what your capabilities are and how best, how best to spend your time and spend your finances for the near future. Because it is about to get ugly, folks. It is about to get ugly. Uh, you know, and, and it may not be this winter that they pull the trigger, but it is looking like it. It is absolutely looking like it. Uh, with China having the mass energy shortage that they have, and of course, we have grossly cut back energy production we've grossly cut back uh coal production in particular and this was something i was giving mike adams a head up, heads up on uh last week before uh, right before i had classes and i was getting some stuff set up and something was uh brought to my attention i passed it over to him uh regarding coal you know australia and china are at an impasse on trade and the coal that they were exporting to China got shut off. So China is having to reach out to Mongolia, uh, reach out to Russia. And it's still not meeting uh, their demand. Here in the United States, we didn't cut off coal exports. And in fact, we increased the exports of our coal production. Or, or rather, our, our, the number in tons of coal that we are exporting, but we cut back production. There, I got my notes right. We cut back the production. And that all, of course, boils down to the EPA, boils down to Hillary Clinton. Uh, they came right out and said it, that they were putting the coal industry out of business. 
I mean, they told the coal miners of West Virginia in a rally, in a Democrat rally, that we're going to put you out of business. And, um, you know, to obviously much consternation, uh, the great people of West Virginia, of Southern Ohio, of Western Pennsylvania, uh, you know, they have really borne the brunt of the exportation of our labor and and really these draconian measures that the EPA, these no-betters, these bureaucrats who are unelected out there, you know, they, that have come up on uh, the green Marxists that have groomed them. Uh, and, and, of course, they're the ideal types. They really think that they're doing something great. Uh, they really d- think that they're doing something great when they tell us, when they dare to lecture us, we should be eating bugs, that we shouldn't be eating beef, that we shouldn't be eating pork. And, of course, you know, I must remind you that the stock houses, the slaughterhouses, the meat production facilities, much of this is owned by China now as well. Much of this is owned by China. You know, here in North Carolina, Smithfield, you know, Smithfield, which is the largest pork producer in the world, is wholly owned by the Chinese. And of course, China is in the midst of an economic meltdown with the continuing fallout of Evergrande. So, you know, folks, again, um, you need to be taking things more seriously. And of course, if you're listening to this podcast, you're already, um, you know, pretty in tune to the things that are going on in the world, uh, the severity of the situation. And, you know, for a lot of you out there, you don't necessarily need to be lectured on what you should be doing as far as becoming more prepared. But then again, there's a lot of folks who do. Uh, There are a lot of folks who do, and it never hurts to point that out again, because this is a big deal. Uh, This is a big deal. You know, AmericaPartisan.org, we are working feverishly behind the scenes. We've got some huge updates coming uh, in the very near future to give all of you the absolute best website, uh, the best website of its kind, and really, I don't know of many websites of its kind, if any, for for our particular genre. So I'm really excited to get this out. But uh, AmericaPartisan.org has a number of affiliates out there uh, that deal in food and, in particular, long-term storable food. Uh, Ready Wise is one of them. Of course, Augustin Farms was a site affiliate as well. Augustin Farms has, as of today, uh, shut down their production. They have shut down ceased production for the next 90 days. I was given a heads up about this by Bob Griswold from uh, Ready Made Resources. And he texted me during class, which was uh, a little bit unusual. He knew that I had class going on, and he called me a couple of times, which again was, was really not like him. And, um, you know, he, he sent a image of the letter over and pointed out that something just didn't sound right, uh, with the owner of August and farms, whom he has done a lot of business with over the years, uh, as a distributor for August and farms and said, this letter just does not sound right. Um, you know, Could be, and and this was only speculation, it could be that, um, you know, it, it, the government bought up their supply and is just holding it or contracted them to make supplies of food for the next 90 days. Could be that. Uh, We don't know. Uh, We don't know. But they did cite that um, they were having a hard time sourcing food and keeping up with the demand itself. So, Who knows? Uh, But we do know that other suppliers are out there and are keeping up with demand as of today and are not shutting down. ReadyWise being one of them. And uh, I've used ReadyWise for the bulk meals for feeding several people at once and uh, been very happy with it. 
I've been very happy with it. I think Ready Wise is a great option. And uh, affordable prices and everything that they have listed on their site is obviously in stock because they have a huge banner up on the top of their site saying so. Uh, I've got everything from them that I've ordered within a couple of days. I've been very, very happy with it. But make sure you click the link down below in the show notes. Uh, underneath this post click that link down below it'll help out this podcast it'll help out the work that we do at american partisan uh and you know brushbeater.org you will be helping us out and i personally would greatly appreciate it but that's just one thing you know that that's just one thing that is just one item of your preparedness that you really need to be focused on now because you know, food is one of those ways that governments over the span, the entirety of human history, uh, induced famines because hungry people are very, very easy to control. Uh, as a good friend of mine put it just the other day, uh, we were discussing a number of different things. And he's a cattle rancher and uh, raises cattle out here in North Carolina. And has a, a lot of head of cattle that he raises every year, about 200 or so. Uh, <clears throat> sometimes a little bit more than that, it just depends. But, um, you know, we were discussing different things. Our whole conversation began, had absolutely nothing to do with prepping or any of that. But uh, he brought up the fact that nitrogen, uh, nitrogen itself, which is needed for fescue, and for growing fescue, which cattle graze on. Cattle can't graze on alfalfa. They need fescue. They need tall fescue uh, to graze on. And in order to meet that demand, what farmers will do is put that fertilizer down and nitrogen is introduced to rapidly uh, get that grass, to get that grazing going. And... The price is just shot up on all of that. Fertilizer is almost unobtainium. And he's, you know, they'll tell you all kinds of stuff about, you know, why the prices are what they are. And, and every distributor will pass the buck along. Uh, Southern states will tell you one thing. Southern states is a, uh, a major uh, company, distribution company, agriculture company down here. And, um, you know, he, he said they'll, they'll tell you a lot of different stories, but what it boils down to is the EPA. Uh, the EPA clamped down on the production and clamped down on a number of the things, uh, the practices that fertilizers com- fertilizer companies themselves have to do, the processes. So they clamped down on all of it, and what they're doing is introducing a shortage. Okay, they're doing this, and we see this at every level. Okay, those ships, those container ships that are hanging out off the coast of California. You know, I think it's very ironic that during the Trump years, you know, when COVID began, when this whole nonsense began, you know, oh, it, we can't shut off trade with China. Oh, you know, and, and, and it was a lot of panicking going on and everything else. But, of course, now we absolutely can because now all of a sudden, oh, we're, we're scared. Right? We're scared of, of COVID coming in, being brought in on the ships or you know whatever else. Whatever other machinations that uh, Fauci and company have cooked up and handed off to the Chinese with uh, you know Dr. Charles Lieber's help. You know, has anybody heard from him, by the way? Anybody heard from Lieber? He's been gone for a little while. Nobody's heard from him. The FBI rolled him up, he disappeared. You know, it's just one of those things, and they are creating shortages because, of course, we all have to be eating bugs, or so we're told uh, by the the little Swedish girl, uh, right? The the myth of the childhood hero, which is a, a very common trope. Uh, you know, when when uh, the Communist Party of China and the CCP had their first cultural revolution they used kids uh, and teenagers especially to be at the forefront of it 
when we had our quote unquote cultural revolution, of course, it was the teenagers uh, who were at the forefront of that as well. And of course, ours was tame. Uh, ours was tame. The 1960s was relatively tame compared to other places, compared to the killing fields of Cambodia. But of course, they are grooming. They are grooming the younger generation, or at least they think they are, for the same here today and again you know coming back to the reality that hungry people are easy to control hungry people are easy to uh, force your will upon with the false promise of here's here's a little bit of food because you know they always do this it's the hegelian dialectic it is creating a problem to observe the reaction and focus upon the reaction. This is what your news media does, by the way. Uh, it, it readily uh, puts the issue, whatever it might be, real or imagined, to the forefront. And that way you will focus on it. So you have a problem. You create the reaction to offer the solution. Over and over and over again. And this is by which the powered elite maintain their grasp on power and i'll be talking more about that more about that the power to lead i use that term uh very very specifically and uh but i will say too another thing that you need to focus on and uh got this this was down in the comments section over on americanpartisan.org if uh you know, all of you out there that have been on the fence about communications equipment or, uh, you know, I don't really know. I'm not really into this thing. I don't know much about it. Well, you know, you absolutely need to at least have one Baofeng radio. Okay, Baofeng UV5R is 25 bucks. even if you never transmit on this thing. Okay, even if you never transmit on this thing, you don't use it for anything other than listening. It has a heck of a lot of capability, plus an FM uh, receiver built into it as well. So you'll be able to listen to commercial FM radio. But you need to be uh, investing in one or a few of these. And I mean, for 25 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever it is they cost, you really need to have one or a few of them. And uh, I really think that time is running out on getting these because, uh, you know, as we know, they're manufactured in China. China has manufacturing shutdown right now uh, where things are, are significantly slowing down as they have power outages, uh, power shortages, as I talked about earlier in the episode. But uh, I had a guy comment in the comments section on one of the articles that went up the other day and uh says you know from another source so he's referencing another source didn't put the link up uh but i did see this in a couple other areas uh Balfang critical info was up late last night discussing radio info with factory reps and wholesale dealers on wechat while the october holiday is going on in china a few important details to pass along. As of June 30th, 35% of Baofeng factory workers were laid off with more layoffs this month due to chip and other material shortages. Those are manufactured in Taiwan, to my knowledge, by the way. It is possible within the next few months they will have 50% workforce production. This is all Chinese manufacturers, not just Baofeng. Two, Due to these shortages, some models are discontinued, unknown if just tempor or temporary or permanently. So far, all Baofeng DMR radios are out of production. Three, items shipped to Amazon warehouses via ocean freight placed in June on the ships are still sitting in ports, unable to unload in the USA. Unknown when they will be unloaded, it is possible not till next year they are being told for price increases we already knew this was going to happen but chinese side baofeng price increases might be five to twenty five dollars per radio not something to cry about however if no radios are being made 
or in low quantity and shipping is slow, guess what? Those eBay and Amazon sellers might just figure out that they can jack the prices up as high as they want. Expect this to happen. Bottom line, if you are thinking about a spare antenna, battery, or radio, don't dilly-dally around much longer. Rumors are floating around some of the some companies that make some popular radios and accessories we discuss in here actually going out of business. It's that bad. Uh, and it is. It is. I concur with that, absolutely. Uh, this is a very serious situation that we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. So, you know, as at the time of this recording, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, um, I don't see any reason, and I never have seen any reason not to own them. Uh, you absolutely should. You absolutely should own several. And, of course, you know, get into amateur radio in general. Uh, the RTO course. So the radio telephone operators course. And I have one coming up in Illinois. Uh, I've got a huge class there, by the way. A huge class. Uh, something around uh, uh, 20 packs in class. 20, I mean, you know, 20 bodies in class that are going to be in there and i might have more before the week is out so i've got a lot you know it's, it's a big class i have several more on the calendar brushbeater.org slash training calendar and uh, you know i go into detail heavy detail on the all the functions all the stuff that that uh bow thing but you know communications in general but that's kind of our, our first building block, right, is dealing with this bow thing. I teach you everything about it, all the stuff that it does, and a lot of which, by the way, a lot of which is not published on how to run this thing in a austere environment or a semi-tactical environment. We cover all of that. So if you've um, ever been thinking, you know, how, how might I employ this in some sort of tactical role, then there you go. And of course, I have another class also, uh, the Illinois class. I have one in Arizona as well, which is going to be in the Prescott region, uh, northern Arizona. So come on out. Uh, definitely, definitely come on out. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going out there. Uh, I'm going to the places where our people need knowledge, right? But these are your warnings, folks. These are the warnings. And this is not a game. This is not tinfoil hat. This is not hyperbole. This is not, uh, you know, all of the things you've probably come accustomed to, you know, over the at least the past decade. This is serious stuff. Um, there are going to be major material shortages. You know, when I was, uh, I was doing some family stuff this morning, and uh, was uh, riding in in one of the trucks and had it on a local news station, uh, local radio station. They they is a country music station. They were playing their their morning show and a little bit of news here and there and whatever. And it's it's you know not really political at all. It's just entertainment. Uh, it's it's just funny ha ha stuff. Because so you got to live a little bit, man. You got to get your mind off of. Uh, crazy things going on in the world sometimes just unplug a little bit and e even they were talking about supply line shortages and how this is coming into uh, common knowledge now in common terms and it dawned on me uh, you know if even they're talking about this if even they are pointing out on the most normy of of normy radio shows out there, if even they're pointing this out, hundred percent non political, couldn't give a shit less about any of that, and they're pointing this out, folks, how bad do you think it's going to get? You know, how bad do you think it's going to get? And I can tell you that uh, from their side, the station producer and. Uh, you know, the, the script writer and, and in their morning huddle before they got on the air as broadcasters and all that stuff they do behind the scenes. I'm fairly certain that somebody brought it up in that meeting and they they probably all had blank looks on their face because we're at that point where a lot of your people in the media, they don't they they don't have a clue. OK, 
they don't have a clue. I mean, what did the broadcasters in the Soviet Union know uh, when the Soviet Union began to fall apart? Or in East Germany when the Berlin Wall came down? You know, what do you, what do, you do? What do you say? What can you say? You're just in a state of shock because things have been so normal. This has been normal for so long. And now all of a sudden, that world is no more. You've got a paradigm shift on your hands. It's coming around. You know, and, and I've been telling you about all this stuff that are material goods. They're material goods at the end of the day. You know, we're blessed with the things that we have, but at the end of the day, they're, they're just things. You know, but food absolutely isn't one of those things that's just a thing. It's a necessity. You know, it's a necessity. And it is a means by which governments maintain themselves in control. That they maintain their grasp of power over the people. That's how they do it. The power elite, those power elite that are out there, they absolutely will not relinquish that control without a fight. Never have, never will. Never have and never will will not without a fight and that's what we're doing because the thing is about those same people is their jig is up as well there's been a global awakening and it's very funny that they have pushed out there their pseudo left their pseudo intellectuals their pseudo revolutionaries the ones who claim that they're on the forefront of such things And truly think that they have a monopoly on intellectualism and on intellectual thought and on the paradigm and the framework of which we think. They think that they have a monopoly on these things. It's very, very funny to me, very humorous to me specifically. I think that it's humorous because they have never, ever faced a fight like the one that we are about to give them. Never. Is a bit of irony, isn't it? It is a bit of irony indeed. We'll take a little break and we'll be back.
little Blackjack Mountain there coming at you with Loaded Gun off of the Holding Time album. And uh, great stuff, man. Great stuff. Got that, that Leonard Skinner kind of raw vibe to the vocals. And, uh, man, that's good stuff. And is good stuff. But, you know, skimming some of the other headlines from the news here, uh, you know, the FBI considering the quote-unquote big guy in the Hunter Biden money probe. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon. Right? <clears throat> you know, the FBI considering the big guy in the Hunter money probe. You know, I hope nobody is expecting much out of this. Uh, I, I certainly hope you don't expect much out of this. Um, you know, this would be asking the FBI to investigate themselves yeah i know that kind of sounds like a like a black pill kind of effect but yeah it is what it is it is what it is you know they you're asking the organization which we know is corrupt from literally top to bottom uh, rife with corruption you know peter short lisa page james comey uh, at the top, and that's just the the you know the the tip of the iceberg, and of course you know the neocons, the Sean Hannitys of the world. To the, well, the good people at the FBI, <laughs> the good people at the FBI. You know, this is it's a couple of bad apples. Yeah, you know, but the funny thing is they're the bad apples at the top ring. You know, and the only thing that they feel bad about is the fact that they got caught, they got exposed because their guy, right, their guy. Uh, the 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 whole inner ring that was at work up there, right? You know they're all working together. There is a bigger picture that's being painted here. So, you know the FBI considering the quote unquote big guy and the Hunter Biden money probe. Sorry, you know it ain't gonna go anywhere. I'm sure they've got top people working on it right dr jones top people working on it you know and this is the thing when you have justice delayed or justice not served at all it actually makes justice far more severe down the road that's what ends up happening and whenever one of their agents gets a little bit too close to the truth right they get a little bit too close to the center of all this and they might just actually expose some of the depths of the corruption going on here. What's going to end up happening is that agent will get shut down. His career will be effectively over. And this will all get swept under the rug. They'll roll up a patsy and do something stupid. Um, you know, Maybe a mass shooting here. A little false flag there. Frame up, frame, you know, let's let's frame up some of those evil Trump supporters, right? Because that's what they're doing right now. They're actively grooming for patsies. And uh, let's not forget, too, that your run-of-the-mill guy, I mean, they live and die by social media. Okay, your run-of-the-mill, younger, uh, hot-shot agent just got hired. Yeah, right? Yeah, think, you, think you're something, right? Uh, you know, working there? Hey. You know, I want you to ask yourself a question. Who do you think you really serve? Do you think you're serving justice? Do you think that you're serving justice? Because when we look at the top, when we look at the, the height of this organization, right? And the FBI is just one of them. You're corrupt from top to bottom. You know, you absolutely are. But, you know, again... I'm pre I might be I might run the risk of preaching to the choir as both my grandmothers used to say uh, but you know the, the corruption at the top uh, and of course you know scrolling down a little bit some more of these headlines a uh, very real possibility Biden could decline quickly I don't I don't know how much more quickly he can decline maybe what is he gonna do fall over on camera uh, and and pull the dying cockroach. Um, you know, they, they drug this guy up, they get him out there, he rehearses his script, he never deviates from the script, nobody in the media is even allowed to question him. Uh, you know, I mean, this, this guy is a literal puppet. Uh, he is a quite 
literal puppet. But, uh, you know, don't expect anything to come out of that because it's not. Uh, it's not. Just like how uh, I've pointed out that Millie is, is an absolute Maoist. Uh, he's not just a Marxist, he's a Maoist. Uh, probably the, the worst interpretation of Marxism that, that could exist, uh, Maoism. And he is quite literally in league with that. And of course, nothing happened to him. Nothing happened to him. Uh, he can call up the commander of the Chinese People's Liberation Army and let him know, hey, yeah, we'll let you know if we're going to attack you and admit to it before Congress, because he absolutely did. And this man has a long and distinguished career of being a socialist piece of garbage. And yet, and yet, he's still where he is, and he ain't going away. Hmm. How about that? How about that? It's very, very interesting. Very interesting. And, you know, the the news keeps pointing to all of this, right? This inner circle. It seems to be this inner circle, this marriage of uh, high-level military, of high-level politician, of high-level industry, all together. Almost as if they formed an oligarchy for themselves. And yet they have their closed-door meetings before Congress, which are fruitless and go nowhere because they pick the politicians. You know, they pick the politicians. Anybody that thinks otherwise... Uh, has no idea how the political process actually works. Where do your local politicians come from? Where does their campaign funds come from? Hmm? Ask yourself that. And ask yourself why they never truly audit themselves. Sure, they have their little rules that they put forth. The McCain-Feingold Act, right? We remember that one. Right, disclose all your your campaign funds. That that is a uh, a a, a uh, stab at transparency. Right, it's a false veil to be pulled back. And of course, we know what we know about McCain now. Right, he ran all those years as oh, I, I, I'm a renegade, I'm a war hero. Except that there are recordings of you. Uh, doing what you did in Hanoi Hilton. And those recordings exist, by the way. Uh, you were there. Uh, you sold out your brothers in arms. And we know this. All right, we absolutely know this. Coming from The Intercept revealed Facebook's secret blacklist of dangerous individuals and organizations. Experts say the public deserves to see the list, a clear embodiment of U.S. foreign policy priorities that could disproportionately censor marginalized groups. Uh, written by Sam Biddle on 12 October 2021. So this is coming in just yesterday. Uh, you know, and... and Skimming through this article, it's essentially pointing out the fact that Facebook has been working in conjunction with the American government. Surprise, surprise. Who's been warning you about that for many years now? Uh, many, many years has went by as a, uh, as a blogger, a conservative blogger, something of a tech blogger, um, you know, dealing specifically in, in communications, uh, you know, a political commentator, podcaster, website owner, business owner. I have pointed out repeatedly what's actually going on with social media. Facebook is just the big bug light in the room, but there are many others. Okay, there are many others. And there is not a social media platform uh, out there, a conventional one anyway, that does not owe fealty to someone who is an unsavory character. You know, so you have to understand how those work, you know, for, for everybody out there. Oh, yeah, but, but social media. Blah, blah. Uh, right. And that gives way to you hitting the easy button over and over again and wanting to organize using social media over and over again. Uh, and they already got you. They got you lock, stock, and barrel. 
You know, we pulled this in the Middle East. I was there for it. I was there for it. The Arab Spring. How was he, how were how was each of the insurrections in the countries of the quote unquote Arab Spring where we literally spread death and destruction? Okay. What what about Egypt? How's Egypt now? It's it's run under a military junta, right? We we installed a Islamicist government there right that was working contrary to the interests of the egyptian people right and the military had to step in and remove them that's how bad they were okay libya what about libya well bp overthrew libya all right uh bp overthrew that what about tunisia tunisia is probably the the most successful of the countries that experienced america's adventures in regime change uh what about Syria. See, Syria held on because Russia finally said it's time to be the adult in the room. All right. Now, Russia's not perfect either. Oh, by all means, you know, free and fair election thing ain't really in their playbook. But then again, hey, I mean, at least they're honest about it, right? The Clintons have been killing people for how long now? <laughs> and uh, if I were this, uh, this attorney that was representing the Clintons, had ties to the Clintons, that is now the focus of the Durham probe, I would be uh, very concerned were I him uh, that he might catch a case of the suicides as well. But uh, it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, they, they can, the idiots at the State Department can, can say what they want about the Russian government. We've been doing it too. Uh, we've been doing it too. We've been doing it for a long time. But Syria succeeded and and uh, is still a stable partner. And the thing is about Syria is that they were willing to work with the West and with NATO. Bashar al-Assad was willing to work with NATO, provided we gave him a fair shake. And boy, what a joke that is, right? What a joke that is. How dare you? We'll just put our person in, all right? But Facebook was instrumental in this, and so was Twitter. And of course, uh, having seen behind the curtain of the things that they were doing there, uh, the thing that they were doing there that we were doing overseas in the marriage between government and what uh, should be private industry, but is not in practice, was very deeply concerning for me. And, of course, I'm seeing this go on now. I am seeing these things occur now and have been pointing it out regularly and consistently uh, over the years. Uh, Much to deaf ears, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. All we can do is what we do, right? All we can do is what we do. All we can do is tell the truth. We can point out the facts. It's up to you to decide. It's up to you to do with the information that you are provided. You know, can't I can't make you do these things. I wish I could. I wish I could because I know where this leads to. I know where this leads to. But anyway, you know, this Intercept article is very, very important. You should go and read it. I'm going to have a link to it on uh, the sh- both the show notes. I'll probably have it put up uh, with AmericanPartisan.org. This looks like a uh, good piece. It needs to be run. And, of course, the Intercept, Green- uh, Glenn Greenwald, it is typically left-leaning, but then again, uh, sometimes in random acts of journalism, they run good stuff. Right? We, can learn, we can learn the most. Uh, you know, we can really learn the most from uh, people who appear to be on the other side because they may not be on the other side. They may not be on the other side. Not always. Not always. Not in every case. And I've learned over the years that when we study the political opposition or those at least who appear to be on the political opposition... It can give us an introspection on our own beliefs and a sharpness that you wouldn't get otherwise. Certainly wouldn't be any talking points that you would get from your your Sean Hannity's and your Glenn Beck's and whatnot. You know, and that's another thing. 
uh, not to go off on a tangent, but, uh, you know, the, the thing is, is that they they read their script, they are given their talking points and they follow that, uh, they follow it to the T, but even they're forced to point out certain realities. And, uh, you know, earlier today, the, uh, the CIA guy or what, you know, whatever he is with, you know, Mockingbird or whatever it is, um, <laughs> that, that, uh, he occupies the Rush Limbaugh, uh, spot now around noon, uh, the noon to three in the Eastern time zone in those markets. Uh, you know, even, even they were pointing out that these draconian measures, this stuff, so the, the Southwestern pilots going on strike and, uh, you know, all, all of these things occurring together, this is really shaping up into a counter-revolution, you know, and who is it that's been pointing that out? I mean, the very title of this show, Radio Contra, right, Radio Contra. Radio Counter Revolution, right? We are the the voice of the Counter Revolution. I've been saying this uh, intermittently for the introduction of the show many times now, uh, many times now over the right around a year that we've been doing this. So it's uh, you know we're we're not quite at a year yet, and of course we've got over one hundred and thirty thousand downloads. Uh, we are one of the fastest growing podcasts on Podbean. We are ranked number seven uh, in the education category, right behind Jordan Peterson. Uh, that is something that I'm very proud of, but it is this audience that I am proud of that we're able to grow. And we're doing that with absolutely no advertising, no promotion other than what we are doing in the strong work ethic and your listenership. Your listenership. You know, if the content is good and the content is worthwhile and it is worth the listen, then the good people will find it. And you have found it. And you have found it. And more and more of you out there are finding it. And I have to say, uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. I enjoy it quite a bit. But... Where I'm going with all of this, where are all of these things, right? So we have the political realm, and of course, the political realm, the Nancy Pelosi's of the world, you know, and, and I thought that it was really humorous, that, uh, this idea that Nancy Pelosi has no idea what to do with the squad, right? Well, <laughs> of course she does. She knows exactly what to do with it. When they come from a district where the candidate was chosen by a casting call and they were elected based on 9% voter turnout, well, that's easy. She made them. She can get rid of them. They'll just be primaried. They'll primary them out. They'll get somebody else in there. That's what they do. It's like changing socks. They don't care. Right? They don't care. These people are soulless. You're literally irrelevant. They will find 50 more attractive faces just like you. So sit on that one. Once your purpose is used up. Or once you get a little too close to the truth. Once you get a little too aware. Once you bite the hand that feeds you. They'll get rid of you. They'll get rid of you. They'll find somebody else. Right? So you have the political realm. Of course, the executive branch, the FBI, right? The FBI, uh, which ironically was formed to hunt communists working in the United States and now are inhabited by them. Uh, But, you know, the... uh, you have that, you have the military circles, right? The, the top brass, the Pentagon, right? You have that. And of course, you have the industrial sector. You have Wall Street. You have big tech. You have Bill Gates. You have his lapdog, Anthony Fauci. You have Pfizer. You have Moderna. You have Merck, AstraZeneca, the pharmaceutical companies that line up at the doors of every medical 
Institute of Higher Learning saying, hey, here's a business card. We offer grants, you know. Interesting times. Very, very interesting times. And a judiciary, especially at the federal level, which is very much a product of the same. They're all interconnected. And if you've ever sat back and wondered that maybe there is more to this puzzle, well, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, many years ago as a younger man, when I was uh, studying sociology and learning about the world and questioning the order of things and wondering why things were the way that they were, and of course me being hard-headed and doing everything the opposite way of what I've been told, notoriously stubborn, uh, and in spite of myself, you know, I discovered some very interesting characters. And of course, some even from America's recent history that in some ways kind of mirror myself, mirror my attitude on things. And maybe that's what draws us to study the phenomena that we do because we're asking these questions. One such guy is C. Wright Mills. And C. Wright Mills, uh, highly controversial, well known in his time in the 1940s, 1950s, as being combative with literally everyone. A true Texan to the core, uh, graduated from Texas, uh, UT Austin, in fact. It started out at Texas A&M, ended up dropping out there after his first year because uh, he was a little too rowdy for the world. Ended up at UT Austin studying sociology. Ended up making his way to being a lecturer at Columbia University. Was invited to the Soviet Union to lecture there. They presented him with an award for the work that I'm about to share with you called the Power Elite. Power Elite's a very interesting take on Wall Street, the Pentagon, and the political class, and the marriage that each of them share with one another as three interdependent branches. And a quote from his work here that I have, which you can find, and I'll have a link to it down below in the show notes, but from section two, insofar as the structural clue to the power elite today lies in the political order, that clue is the decline of politics as genuine and public debate of alternative decisions with nationally responsible and policy coherent parties and with autonomous organizations connecting the lower and middle levels of power with the top levels of decision. America is now in considerable part more a formal political democracy than a democratic social structure. And even the formal political mechanics are weak. Now, sit back and contemplate the gravity of those words. He wrote this in the mid-1950s. It was a culmination of a lot of research and a lot of observation of a very different world than that in which he grew up. This is in the post-World War II world where the Pentagon and the American military might had now reached omnipotent levels. It seemed like war with the Soviet Union was going to be a certainty. And of course the Soviet Union was no saint either. He criticized them on their own soil for very much being the same. But in different ways. And of course now we see with everyone out there who is disaffected after this election. Everyone who after November, who after January 6th, who looked at their own nation and said, we no longer have free and fair elections. Well, we have to look just a bit to the past and we see it. This puts the pieces together. This explains why. Why we have the marriage 
of industry. Why our industry sold itself out. Why the politics sold itself out. And then finally, with the revelations against Maoist Millie, why the military itself was sold out. It was sold down the river. It was done by design. And C. Wright Mills saw it coming. Another key quote here <clears throat> from the same section. Longtime tendency of business and government to become more intricately and deeply involved with each other has, in the fifth epoch, reached a new point of explicitness. The two cannot now be seen clearly as two distinct worlds. It is in terms of the executive agencies of state that the reproachment has proceeded most decisively. The growth of the executive branch of government with its agencies that patrol the complex economy does not mean merely the enlargement of government as some sort of autonomous bureaucracy. It has meant the ascendancy of the corporation's man as a political eminence. Folks, if you don't think that is applied directly to social media, I don't know how better to explain it to you. If you don't think that applies to the pharmaceutical industry, which is enforcing its will, these are the people, by the way, who have had vast swaths of the American working class now addicted and ruined by opioids. The hillbilly heroin crisis. And we're more than willing to push crack over on the inner cities. We see it. We see it. It's there. And they're all part of the same. Insofar as the structural clue to the power elite today relies in the enlarged and military state, that clue becomes evident in the military ascendancy. The warlords have gained decisive political relevance, and the military structure of America is now in considerable part a political structure. The seemingly permanent military threat places a premium on the military and upon their control of men, material, money, and power. Virtually all political and economic actions are now judged in terms of military definitions of reality. The higher warlords have ascended to a firm position within the power elite of the fifth epoch, folks. That explains that segment right there. You apply that to the actions of Maoist Millie and Lloyd Austin. Maoist Millie, during the last years of Trump, in the wake of the the real insurrection in D.C., where they burned churches, they burned the streets, and Maoist Millie didn't want to defend the White House. Maoist Millie came out and made statements in contrary of the President of the United States. Because the President of the United States is not part of this. He was not part of this. Donald Trump was not part of this power to elite. Sure, he made his money in Wall Street, but he, the guy was always a rogue. He was outside of the real power structure right here. And they knew it. And he wouldn't play ball with them. That's why they kicked him to the curb. And they had a plan to do it. That's why Maoist Millie was busy meeting with Nancy Pelosi. And that's why they got away with it. And that's why they think they continue to get away with it. Because they're all from the same organism. They're all from it. Folks, it's not a long read. <clears throat> and again, I'll have a link to the full text. It's a much longer book, which I strongly recommend you should get, but of course there's segments of it uh, and I will have a link to it where you can read it very plainly, no advertising or anything like that that'll be on it. It's worth reading because you have to make sense of the world. You have to make sense of the world. Now, C. Wright Mills was hardly a conservative. He labeled himself a wobbly, uh, if you know what that is. 
international uh, workers of the world. You know, he he would very much have been considered a, a socialist, uh, but also something of a libertarian. Having uh, read his other work, you know, he considered himself first and foremost a free man and a free thinker. And that's what we all have to be. You know, you don't have to necessarily agree with someone lock and stock on everything to learn something from them. You know, and I think that is one of the biggest tragedies in academia today that we hold this belief that everyone must be a particular way. That they teach from this idea of a foregone conclusion. And I know. Believe me, I know. It's worth the read. For any of you out there who are wondering why the condition of the United States today is in that which it is, the current state of things, just look back. Just look back. There's a lot of that out there. A lot of the reasons why. And these are all things that you won't hear anywhere else but on Radio Contra because we've got a very unique outlook on the world. And I'm going to be exploring these ideas a lot more in depth in the future because I think the time is now to do that and to take action. You know, folks, it is an absolute honor. Again, I tell this to the world every episode. It's an absolute honor to be doing this. I am going to be out for the weekend. We've got a big class coming up this weekend. I've got more classes for the remainder of the year that are going to be up. Brushbeater.org slash training calendar, communications training, medical training, uh, mech medic has got a lot on tap, and he sent me over a list of dates for the remainder of his year and into 2022, uh, what he's got going on. I'm going to be putting those up on brushbeater.org slash training calendar, brushbeater.org slash training calendar. Get out there, get some training, um, you know, contact me, email me direct, my email account, um, you know, NC Scout at brushbeater.org, you know, hit me up and I would love to have the opportunity to train with you out there. But we've got a lot of dates, ones that are coming up. Still got spots in Illinois, still got spots out in Arizona. Um, you know, got scout courses on tap for early next year, February, uh, January, RTO, Advanced RTO, Signals Intelligence down in Florida. Then we've got one in Tennessee as well. Uh, so we will be out at Ready Made Resources, Bob Griswold's place for class out there. Um, we will be hanging out with Angry American uh, himself. So if you ever uh, wondered uh, about Angry American, and uh, his Going Home series. He is hosting those three classes at his place down in Florida. And uh, really looking forward to interacting with all of you out there. It's going to be a heck of a good time. But I cannot underscore the need for getting training right now, folks. Get that training now. Because you can buy all the stuff, right? You need to go out and get as much food as you can. I've been telling people to buy ammo for how long now? For forever. You know, communications gear, all that stuff. Well, the ammo is pretty expensive, right? And and honestly, if you didn't buy enough ammo before now, you know, eh, you, might ought to, you, you might ought to get what you can, but I'm just saying it's an expensive enterprise, right? But communications gear is still relatively inexpensive, at least for now. Okay, at least for now. Take advantage of it while you can. Get the training while you can. Okay, medical. Medical training is paramount. I honestly, I mean, the tactical stuff, scout course stuff, all that fun, you know, the the fun run and gun stuff is a heck of a lot of fun. But guess what? 
Okay, if, if you're planning on making holes, you better plan on having to plug holes too uh, and be able to triage people under fire and then have the follow-on care after that. You know, so uh, a lot on the calendar, a lot on the calendar. Running a little bit long in this episode and uh, there will not be another Sons of Liberty this week because I'm going to be uh, headed out to training and I'm going to be out for uh, the remainder of the weekend. So this is the last episode. I know uh, some of y'all were getting real enthusiastic because I was cranking out a lot of content. But uh, the schedule is going to be pretty tight for the rest of the month because of all of the things that I have going on. Uh, but anyhow, your listenership, your support, your outreach out there has been uh, a very big inspiration and honor to me to be able to interact with all of you on uh, just a, a wonderful level. Folks, go out and do something wonderful. Get yourself prepared. And, you know, the chips are going to fall where they will. But a people with knowledge or a people armed. God bless you, good night, and this is NC Scout, out.